So this is Sex as a Pre-Op Trans Woman, Part 2. So in my last video, I talked a lot about the emotional and spiritual side of things and how sex feels as a trans woman and how it's changed for me since starting at HRT. But in this video, I want to focus more on the physical sensations and what type of sexual activity feels good for me as a trans woman because I feel like there's a lot of misunderstanding about this and I think there's a lot of people who just don't know even where to start when it comes to pleasing themselves or other people who happen to be trans. So the first rumor I'm going to go ahead and throw out entirely is that we like having our downstairs area played with the same before and after. I know that sexuality is a spectrum and every trans person experiences their sexuality differently, but I have not met a single a single trans person who has sex the exact same before they transitioned as after they transitioned. And a lot of the techniques and things that you would do to a cis guy feel really, really bad on a trans woman. Um, regardless of sexuality, um, what other gender you're being with, there's just certain things that you wouldn't do with a woman, um, and you shouldn't do with a trans woman, you know? Um, a lot of the things you can't do with a woman, so it's kind of self-explanatory. If it's not something, let's just, I think, break down to one pro tip, you know, I can give y'all. If it's not something you would do with a cis woman, it's, if it's not something you could physically do to a cis woman, don't do it to a trans woman or don't do it with a trans woman. You know, I think a lot of the times people get focused on what makes them feel good, which is all fine and good, but if you're not considering what your partner is experiencing and what their response is to what you're doing, you know, you're not being a very generous lover. So I'm just going to start off, um, for me, I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how I want to break down the terminology of using everything because there was some confusion about how I did it in my last video. So I'm going to break down the terminology into three different, you know, sections and I'm going to use how I would describe it and then what the actual biological definition is. So for me, I describe the clitoris. Um, for me, my clitoris is the very tip of the penis. Um, it is the very sensitive zone at the top, okay? It does not include the shaft. Let me reiterate, it does not include the shaft. I do not gain, get almost any sensation from having that area played with. Um, it's more similar to like having my, my lips played with. Um, so think about when you're rubbing you know, my shaft, it's like you were just rubbing the outside of my, my vagina. It feels nice, but it's not actually going to get me off in any way, shape or form. And a lot of the times because of dysphoria, if you're, depending on how you're playing with that skin, it can actually be very negative experience for me to have that played with. Um, so I'm just going to start off and this is just my personal thing, but I know a lot of other trans women who identify with this as well. It's don't stroke it, you know, think about how you would play with a clit, a clit and like rubbing it gently. And that's the mentality you want to take, not trying to, you know, <sighs> masturbate me. I, you know, it's like a lot of guys do the motion that they would do on themselves. And it's like, that feels really bad. That not only does not feel good, it actually is ruining anything that you had previously going for you. Just little circle motions um, on the very tip, you know, very sensitive, very erogenous, um, you know, tease me you know, toy me, toy with me, like, you know, play with me, you know, don't just go in like, and expect that to work, because has that ever worked with any woman you've been with? And if you think the answer is yes, then 
you might need to have some conversations with some of the women you've been with. But besides that, I, I think that just having that idea of not treating it like a penis is just such a fundamental thing. If you're treating any part about my sexual organ like the opposite sex, it's going to be a huge turnoff for me. Um, so going down a little bit, um, we're going to move on. Um, we talked about the, the tip, um, which would be my clitoris um, and the shaft, which I view as my labia. Um, and now we're going to move into the the final area, which is where you know, I consider it my vagina, um, but the biological definition for it would be my testicles. Um, I guess it's so weird for me to say that because I just don't use that terminology for myself. I really do look at it like a vagina that's just kind of an Audi and not an any, you know? So it's, it's just, I think changing that for myself has had such a positive impact on my sexual life that if you don't already do that, I really strongly, strongly recommend you at least trying it because it, it has taken away a lot of the pain that, that is in my sexual experiences and that is something I cannot put into words. Um, but yeah, so the three parts are going to be the clitoris, the labia, and then the actual vulva or vagina, um, or the alternative labelings would be the penis, the shaft, and or the, you know, the head, the shaft, and the balls. Um, I like all three getting played with in different ways. But really, you know, just think about you want to be playing with the, the vulva and the vagina. You want to be fingering it. You want to be, you know, just very gently just rubbing it and caressing it. You're not trying to, like, just shove your fingers all the way up inside. That's really horrible and painful. And I'm sure it would be for someone with a, um, a like, a natal vagina. Um, you know, I think that... Basically, just the cheat sheet version of all of this is that if it's something that would feel good for a woman, it's probably going to feel good for a trans woman. Um, or, you know, the closest thing you can get to that action, you know? Like, I obviously don't have a way for people to go inside me, but, you know, you can still lightly finger and, you know, put some pressure, light pressure on that area and it feels like I'm being penetrated. So... You know, once again, if you can't do what you could with the cis woman, just get as close as you can and it's going to get you a lot farther than, you know, trying to do what it feels right for men and for yourself, you know. So, but those, those are the three areas, um, you know, some things you can do is to just, you know, kind of roll the skin, just very lightly play with it, you know, tease it and just... You know, treat it like a very delicate flower and it will open up more and more and it'll tell you how to please it and how it needs to be pleased. Um, especially when I'm playing with myself, you know, having enemy with myself is a lot harder because of the genital dysphoria. And so a lot of the times, you know, I'll, I'll listen to audio files and I'll just disconnect from feeling the physical sensations and just focus on you know, imagining what I want to be feeling and just imagining what it feels like to, to experience certain things and just, you know, focus on the things that I do enjoy, you know, it's really easy to get caught up in the dysphoria, but if you focus on what's feeling good, it'll take you through that a lot of the times. And I really just recommend to anyone who's struggling right now, just listen to your body. Just take in that information. You don't have to figure it out all in one day. It was, it is still an ongoing process of me figuring out my sexuality and what feels good to me and how to get myself off. I didn't orgasm for the first time as a woman until about a year ago. And that's like three, almost four years into my transition. So it's not something that just happens overnight. Like you're just going to start transitioning and be like, oh, I come differently. My orgasms are different. It's something you have to 
listen to your body, listen to what it wants, and it'll eventually give you the things that you need and that you've really been craving. Um, so I really just don't get mad at yourself if your body isn't doing the things that you want it to do. You're quite literally having to reprogram and unprogram years and years and years of doing things in a way that did not make you comfortable. So just give yourself the grace to just experience and explore and just know that you can find what actually does make you fulfilled in a sexual sense and it doesn't have to just be today. So with that said, I think I'm going to wrap up this one, um, but there will be a part three that is dealing more with the emotional and intimate side of, you know, sex as a trans woman and, you know, what my attractions have changed, you know, how I connect in relationships a little bit more, um, what that give and take is like, um, my dynamic with myself and my own self-talk during sex and how that's changed. Um, so please, if you've been enjoying this and gaining something from it, you know, keep posted and I will be posting a third part very soon. Um, so thank you all for joining me. Thank you for going on this journey for me. Thank you for taking care of your bodies and owning your sexuality and doing the work to unpackage and repair all the damage that has been given to you through your life as a trans woman or if you're watching this to help your partner thank you for doing the work to help them heal from these very traumatic experiences and you are a huge part in helping your partner feel comfortable and expressing who they are so please just remember that know that all of y'all matter every single one of y'all has a place in this world and you deserve to be here. And when you can own who you are and what you need to feel good, you are so much more powerful and you are capable of changing anything in your life. So from one woman to another, or from one person to another, if there are any non-binary or you know, people who don't identify as trans women um, watching this video and still trying to get in, get something out of it from one person to another. Thank you. I love you. And I'm so great. I'm so glad and grateful to be sharing this journey with you. Much love always.